When I mention to some people that I'm a homeschool parent, they'll often respond by saying, oh, I can never homeschool because I don't have patience. Or sometimes they say, I can never homeschool because I can't imagine being around my kids all day. Or I can never homeschool because you get the point. As a former public school teacher, these same people believe that it's easier for me because I was a teacher. That's what I thought as well my first year of homeschooling, but I soon discovered the hard way that that simply wasn't true. You see, I tried to recreate public school at home. I'm talking detailed lesson plans, homeschooling from 8 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, every day, textbooks, worksheets, tests. It didn't take long for me to realize that what I was doing was not sustainable and it was also not beneficial to my kids. Plus, it kind of defeated the purpose of me choosing to homeschool in the first place. While there are a few benefits to having an educational background, former educators have to go through some of the same shifts in mindset to truly embrace the freedoms and benefits of homeschooling their children. In this episode, I'll be speaking with Leslie Sessler, a former public school teacher and administrator who left the traditional classroom and public school mindsets behind to homeschool her son, Sammy. She will share the insight and joys she's discovered having completed her first year of homeschool. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Kendra. Welcome to A Heart for Homeschool podcast. I'm so glad to have you here with us today because you have been a principal and a teacher before, and this, you've just completed your first year of homeschooling. Am I correct? Yes, yes, yes. My first year of homeschooling is in the books, as they say. Awesome. And so just to give you more about Leslie, Leslie Jones Sessler is an unschooling and eclectic homeschooling mom to her five-year-old son, Sammy. She is also a homeschooling education, motherhood, and lifestyle blogger at watchmonkeymama.com. And I will put those links in the description below. Leslie is a progressive educator and child advocate with 32 years of experience. She has served in roles as teacher, literacy coach, assistant principal, principal, assistant superintendent, adjunct college professor, and foster youth advocate. From her designation as a master teacher by the New York City Department of Education in 1999 to her appointment as the founding principal of the first all-girls public elementary school in Cleveland, Ohio, Ms. Joan Sessler's commitment to education and to children and youth has carried her into the communities and schools of Brooklyn, Manhattan, and the Bronx, in New York, Hoboken, New Jersey, Cleveland, Ohio, and the entire state of Indiana, where she has successfully championed the rights of children and youth through her teachings, school leadership, and support of program activities. Ms. Joan Sessler holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in broadcast journalism from Virginia Union University, a Master of Science in Education degree with specialization in early childhood and elementary education from Bank Street College of Education, an advanced master of education degree with specialization in curriculum and teaching from Columbia University, teacher's college and a master's degree in school administration and supervision from the City College of New York School of Education. Deanna with her husband Randy and their son Sammy. They also have a dog named Charlie. We have a dog named Charlie and a fish named Happy. You can find Leslie on Clubhouse where she moderates in several weekly rooms. She is also on Instagram, Facebook, and her website all with the handle Watch Monkey Mama. Thank you. What a an impressive and extensive resume, which is why I am so excited to be able to chat with you as a former public school administrator and teacher. I am curious to know 
how has or how was your first year of homeschooling? It was really great. It really, really was. Uh, and I think it was great, Kendra, because I am implementing the unschooling model, which okay. is self-directed education, which is child-led, child interest. Uh, Sammy is the curriculum. So it was pretty easy going, very carefree because he plays all the time. And we know through play and education, the two are married and children learn so much. So it wasn't difficult because I let go. I surrendered, I released myself. I enjoyed the, the process. I trusted the process. Uh, were there times that I was a little apprehensive being a former teacher in a classroom and a principal, a little bit, sure, because there were times I would have to let go of that voice in my head, like, hmm, well, remember, if you were in school, you would be implementing this curriculum, right? And you'd be looking at the standards and this and that and the other. But it was, it was a great year. It's hard to believe it's been a year, but yeah, thumbs up. Great year. Well, I'm so glad that you say that because this is a new experience for a number of homeschoolers this year and especially Black homeschoolers. Yes. Our numbers have increased substantially and a lot of parents or homeschool parents, I'm sure that are newbies, have some anxiety. And I want to ask, did you have anxiety going into homeschooling? I went into homeschooling, Kendra, during the pandemic. And so there was some anxiety there because prior to COVID, uh, Sammy was in a preschool uh, for three days a week. And so the back of my mind, I kind of, I kind of knew I was going to homeschool him. Uh, so there was a little bit of anxiety because we had to quickly get him out of the school. And you know how that, how it was in 2020. And sadly now it's a little bit like it again. Uh, but so the anxiety came from not being able to have him play with his friends, go on play dates, not being able to go out into the world and to different uh, the science central museum, to the zoo, uh, to the parks, to all the things that we used to do uh, throughout the week. Uh, so, so there was some anxiety there. Um, yes. And, and again, just other anxiety a little bit when at times I would sometimes doubt myself and just wonder, this is too good to be true, <laughs> you know? Um, this particular educational philosophical approach with homeschooling, with the unschooling, and then also eclectic homeschooling where I'm using a blend of Waldorf and Reggio and Montessori and other progressive educational philosophies. Uh, it really is a more relaxed, hands-on experiential learning process. And so, uh, knowing that I was kind of taking like a passenger seat, you know, or a back seat, that driver's seat and letting him do the work, letting, letting him just be creative and, and, and think critically and ask away. And so there was sometimes some anxiety there because I'm, I'm a little bit more used to being uh, more of a participant and sometimes more of a leader, you know, when it comes to being a teacher. So yeah, I, I would say that that's the anxiety that I felt. And I, can I continue for a minute? Yeah, please. Okay. I, I will say um, there were, there were also some times that I felt anxiety when I started to think about when we finally are back into the real world and what are other moms going to say and ask, right? That's where I start to get a little anxious. Um, and do I have my notes in my pocket for how I'm going to respond? You know, um, because they may ask, well, I'll, I'll say it. Uh, it. It's, you know, it's really interesting. I, now it's the time where a lot of people are putting up their social media posts of all their beautiful children first day of school, right? And, uh, and uh, I 
I'm, I'm commenting on everyone's posts like, oh, your child's beautiful. They look so adorable and I'm so happy for them. And it's interesting because no one's writing back to me hardly saying, so how's Sammy doing? <laughs> what are his plans, you know? And I don't know, it's, it's almost like you can ask, you, you know, he's fine. He's being homeschooled and you can, you can ask. And so, uh, and then if they do ask and I'll, I'll say he's being homeschooled, then there's like no back and forth. It's like, period, end of sentence. So that is a little bit anxiety ridden because I know that when we go into the real world, it's kind of like, okay, people are going to be wondering, like, why is he not in school? Um, what are you doing? Uh, what is this unschooling? What's eclectic homeschooling? Like have all the questions. And so I think my anxiety is going to be held off until the real world opens up. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned about the anxiety part because I think that is a large part of anxiety when you first start homeschooling is what are other, how am I going to respond or dis defend my decision to homeschool to people who probably or may possibly, let's say may possibly have some misconceptions mm -hmm. surrounding what, what I'm choosing to do. Yes. And so my question is, how have you managed those thoughts and that anxiety? I'll, I'll start by saying, um, well, I guess I managed them by having information and by doing the research. And that's what I really appreciate you so much because, you know, I'm new at this. I'm just a year, a year and I'm a newbie. I'm a neophyte and going to your YouTube's you know, your podcast, um, I'm really learning a lot from you. I'm learning a lot from others on Clubhouse and I'm reading a lot of books on unschooling. Um, I'm reading a lot of articles. I'm, I'm joining Facebook groups and Instagram groups and on Twitter, I'm connecting with people. So all of these great resources or this great tribe that I am now a part of is helping me to, to manage. And, and, and you all are giving me the tools, the resources, you're giving me the words to say, you know, um, I think I was listening to, uh, oh boy, it was, it was someone the other day and uh, they were, oh, I know it was, I know what it was. It was uh, in Wild and Free. Uh, I was, I'm reading that great book on unschooling. I love it. Right. And I think it was almost like your response when they're asking, well, what are you doing? And what is unschooling and why? It's, and, and what a response could be, it's, it's a great educational approach that works for our family and we're having a great time. So can you pass the potatoes, please? <laughs> you know? It's like, just change the subject, you know, and just keep on going. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll have more to say, but I love it when I can say it's, it, it works for us. It works for us. And uh, my son is happy. He's full of joy. He loves waking up and exploring and doing his own thing. And he's learning so much, so, so much. And so if you want to have a conversation, then sure, we can have a conversation about it. Uh, what I hopefully hope will not happen is, is the judgment, because I want to always respect what you do for your family and for your children. And I would just hope that that is reciprocated. That's how I manage yes. for now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and the judgment, and the other thing is, you know, depending on who's asking or who's judging, we don't always even have to give an answer, right? Because yes. it's not like we go around to public school parents asking, why did you choose, why are you, why do you still have your child in public school or why did this, that, and the other? Because like, that's rude, right? It's so rude. <laughs> it's, and, and it doesn't make sense. I mean, just let people be. Yeah. But I think that one, I don't want to say, but I guess good thing that has come out of the coronavirus pandemic has been that homeschooling has really become or come center stage in our society. So there's not a, while there's still a lot of misconceptions mm -hmm. um, and opinionated people that are basing their opinions on their just, I don't know, but not necessarily based in experience, experience or fact, mm -hmm. uh, this pandemic has been 
good in terms of putting homeschooling on center stage and at least starting a, a conversation about it, right? Yes, I agree. I also want to say, I definitely agree with that. And I also think that it has been an, an advantage point because hopefully parents have been able to see their children in a different light. Yes. In an educational light. Hopefully parents are able to see how their children learn, how their children process process information, right? How their children hopefully are critical thinkers or if not, why not? You know, hopefully uh, it has brought them closer with, with the relationship, with the bonding, right? Uh, and, and in many ways, hopefully it has made them make a decision. Wow, you know, maybe, maybe homeschooling is best for my child. Maybe my child doesn't need to go back to school when school's open because my child is happier, is learning more. Uh, there aren't all of the other pressures that can happen in some educational settings. And so this, this works for us. So I'm hoping that a lot of knowledge and awareness has come out of this um, for, for, for children and parents. And you're saying this, this is the other thing. Mm -hmm. um, you're saying this having advanced degrees in education, having classroom experience, extensive classroom experience and extensive public school mm -hmm. leadership Yes. experience. Mm -hmm. And so that really speaks volumes that there is something to this, right? There, there is, and there is. And, and, and I always, I always want to say here on your platform and whenever I'm speaking about this topic that I am not, I am not trashing schools. I am not here to say that schools are bad and, oh no, you know, get your kid out of schools. Not at all. I love education. I love schools. I love public schools, private schools, charter schools, um, public charter schools, public schools, whatever, uh, Catholic schools, whatever, whatever is your school. And if it works for you, I love that. I can only speak on my experiences and I am a progressive educator. And I've been a progressive educator and working in progressive schools for the majority of my teaching and educational experience, except for, I believe, like one year. And in that, well, maybe one to two years, I did some substitute teaching as well. And in those small one to two years, perhaps, it was enough for me to realize that there are things that I do not like about some traditional, some traditional schools that I experienced. Um, and also being where I am now with my family here, uh, I went to the schools. I visited the school, the school rather, that Sammy would have been going to. I spoke with the superintendent privately in a one-on-one in -on -one meeting that I set up when Sammy, I think was three, right? I went to the school and met with the principal one-on-one -on -one. and Kendra. Um, so there were two things in my decision and I hope I'm, I'm okay for talking about yeah, this. You're, okay. you're perfectly fine. Okay. Thank you. Uh, number one, beautiful, beautiful schools. I mean, state of the art facil facility, amazing, amazing, huge school, right? Beautiful, beautiful school. However, uh, I wasn't, um, it, it, for me, it, it was, it wasn't as progressive enough in some regard. And so I wanted a little bit more for Sammy. Uh, I'm not saying it was traditional, but maybe maybe traditional slash progressive, if that could be one, right, a school. And so I, I, I questioned some of the educational practices. Um, and, I, and, and that was enough for me to be like, you know what, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, and then also, and when I say that, I, I think about, I do not want the love of learning to leave his eyes like in, in wild and free, right? I do not want the joy of learning. I, I don't want Sammy to suddenly be looking around and wondering the way I sound, who's going to judge me. I don't want him to be a student where he's got such amazing vocabulary. And like, for example, he, he'll walk around and he'll say, oh, mommy, I'm ruminating right now. I, I can see a teacher shutting him down right now. And also the fact that he's a black boy, which is another reason um, that we're homeschooling because it's not diverse enough. You know, Kendra, you were a black teacher. I was a black teacher. I was a black administrator. 
I know that in schools, if diversity really means a lot to you, you can make it diverse. I did that in Cleveland, Ohio, where our school, our staff was extremely diverse. And that's so important, not just for black and brown children, but for all children. And we also know with research that if a black child has a black teacher by third grade, the chance of them going to college is, 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 is huge. But in this particular school, Kendra, not one black teacher, not one black administrator. In our district, not one black administrator. Sammy probably would not have had a black teacher until maybe middle school and maybe high school. And so I know that this is an honor, um, somewhat of a privilege um, to be able to stay home. And, and, I, and I, I do thank God for that. Uh, so that's how it is in our family. And so, yes, not bashing schools, not trashing schools at all, but in my own assessment of schools here, that was not going to work for us. And we are now homeschooling and we are, we're, we're loving it. Every, everything about it, we're loving it. Have there been challenges though in your first year um, that you can identify? Uh, yes. Yeah, so again, I, I know I keep going back to the same example. Um, but having been a teacher, you know, having been um, a principal, uh, you know, with, with, with teachers, we are all, we, we, we have a, a lesson plan book, right? We have <laughs> yes. standards, benchmarks, assessments, right? What's the baseline? Uh, always testing. We have students that have anxiety. We have, uh, we, we, we have hopefully differentiated instruction. Hopefully we have 20, hopefully, well, sometimes 25. Uh, I've had 36 students in a class where I did multi-age teaching before. Um, that's a lot of, that, that's hard yeah, work, that's a right? Lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. And, um, and, and I, I give it up for teachers. I mean, amazing teachers are, are amazing people. And the ones that do it, do it right, I think are just amazing where they are going to make sure it's a one, it's not, it's not a one size fits all right? Every child is important. Every child deserves their own curriculum, flexible grouping. I mean, you name it, just so many wonderful educational approaches that work. And um, so now homeschooling Sammy, knowing that as a teacher, I'd be doing all of those strategies and skill sets and, and, and teaching and whatnot, and looking at the standards all the time, looking at the benchmarks, assessing all the time, informal assess assessments, formal assessments, um, sometimes you have, I have to think about, okay, that's my, that's what I used to do. And now this is what I'm doing differently. And the thing about homeschooling, as we all know, we're doing it because we wanted something different for our children, right? That, that's why we're doing it. Again, not, hopefully not putting things down, although, yeah, sometimes I am putting things down when I do not like rote memorization. I do not like uh, drill and kill. I, I do not like going into classrooms and the teachers are the ones making the rules. It's not a democracy, you know, I, I have issue with that. And so um, I sometimes have to, you know, again, that, that, that voice in my head when it's like, hmm, what are the benchmarks? Uh, where would Sammy exactly size up right now with these benchmarks, you know? I think you were asking about the challenges. That is a challenge when, when I have to remember the philosophy that I'm following in homeschooling him. And does that method work with this philosophy? And every all homeschoolers have their own philosophies and I respect them all. But with unschooling and eclectic homeschooling in a very uh, progressive, hands-on experiential manner, it's not going to be this constant assessing. It's not going to be this constant looking at the standards and teaching to the standards, it's, it's, it's quite different in this approach. And, um, and I will say, Kendra, I think an advantage that I have, and I think that you have being an educator, is that even though I'm not pulling that information out, it's already in here. You know, like I'm looking and I'm like, hmm, yeah, he's got that. He has that, he understands that. Or, hmm, okay, he's not there yet but that's okay because he's going to get there eventually in his own time. And that's what I love about unschooling is that children learn naturally. It's they'll read naturally, they'll write naturally, 
They'll, they'll, they'll speak, they'll do math. It's, it's game schooling, lots of game schooling I love. It's all natural. So yeah, that, that's a huge challenge. Well, and, and, you know, I am glad that you actually talked about it again, because a lot of times people will be dismissive and say, oh, well, you have it easy because you were a public school teacher. And it's like, actually, in some ways, it's harder because you have to let go of a lot of that. And I mean, for me, I'm not an unschooler. I am eclectic, but I still like I have some structure and then I give them some freedom. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of you're picking and like you still, I guess, like you said, it's good because you get to have that in your head and yeah. you can kind of gauge or have some kind of means of comparison for your own self, not for your child. Mm-hmm. But I am totally in agreement with you. I think all of the assessing all of the time exhaustively and teaching rote memorization and drill and kill and let me learn these collection of facts with no continuity so yeah. that I can pass a test to make it appear as though I know something that I really don't understand yeah. is not education in its at its finest. Right. And I don't think it's a lot of fun either. Oh, <laughs> no. And education should be fun, right? It they're, should. They're children, right? Why are we trying to get them to grow up so quickly? Really? That's a very good point. Yeah. Um, I want to say that it is it, 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 like, yes, it is a lot of work as an educator. It, I don't want to say it's more or less, but definitely no one should think, oh, you got it made. It's easy. No, it's, it really isn't because it, it's, it's not like, oh, he just does whatever he wants. And I'm just in the kitchen baking brownies. No, that is not it whatsoever. I am with him. I'm learning to, to step back and to observe. Uh, but inside my head, I'm thinking, okay, he loves planets, right? That's his own self-interest, right? He's crazy about planets and the solar system, the galaxy. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, uh, sort of like a thematic unit, right? And as an educator, and that takes work. Yes, it does. I've got to call the library. I've got to start checking some books out. I've got to think about, okay, how can I naturally perhaps create some science experiments, right? Some math, some math experiments, uh, communication skills. I mean, I'm thinking of all of those like core subject areas, even though I want them to be uh, integrated, that takes a lot of work and prep in a very natural way. So it's not like he wakes up, I'm like, okay, so here you're doing science today. That's not it at all. It's like, hey, you know, what you just asked is a great science question. Let's do some research and let's go outside with the telescope and let's read some books on planets and let's create arts and crafts of planets. I mean, you're doing every single subject and that is a lot of work and a lot of planning behind the scenes as as a homeschooler slash educator. Okay, Leslie, so I want to ask you, I want to challenge what you have defined for yourself as unschooling. So I've heard the definition of unschooling as um, that a child, what, you know, the parent doesn't direct them at all, but that the child just through play and through experience or whatever, they determine something that they're interested in and they pursue it. And the the parent doesn't necessarily facilitate that so much. And I want you to answer this because I think you have such a great response to it. Okay. Okay. So from my knowledge, and I believe that when someone is, I mean, especially our precious children, right? When someone is going to, whether you're educating children in a brick and mortar or you're educating them at home. You need to do the research. You need to know, you need to be able to walk the walk and talk the talk. And so for me, how that shows up in my world is I read a lot of books, I mentioned it earlier, and I wanna learn from the experts. I wanna talk to people that are unschoolers. I also know from doing the research that there are different definitions for unschooling. There's radical unschooling, there's unschooling, 
people had their own methods. What I have come to love and appreciate about unschooling, again, even in my clubhouse conversations with other unschoolers, is that you really make it your own. It, it's self-directed education, however that looks to you. So for example, I just happen to have <laughs> my book, <laughs> Unschooled, which I love. I love this book by Carrie McDonald. I'm also, my gosh, Free to Learn by Peter Gray. Then there's, a, I'm, I'm also listening to Wild and Free and, and reading it as well on the side. Uh, just amazing books. But what I love about this book, right, Unschooled, Carrie McDonald is she talks about unschooling being self-directed education. And she talks about having the freedom, the freedom to learn is provided. And that's what CME has. The freedom to learn is provided. And the resources are available. Okay. And I'll come back to that one in a minute. Then there's time and space for learning that's afforded or offered, sorry, offered. And then finally, knowledgeable and supportive facilitators, me, are available to help if needed. So the way I look at this, Freedom to learn is provided. So for example, uh, Sammy has an interest in the planets. Uh, he like woke up one day, it may have been in all the reading that we do, because as unschoolers, we read a lot in our home. Reading is, it, it's, it's, it has to be the foundation. And he, we probably read about five books a day, minimum. If you were to go around this wall, you would see our staircase, literally in baskets, there are books organized by genre. Yes, that's an educational approach that I got from being a teacher. And you know what? It works in this household. It works with this unschooling family. Okay, so see, I'm to the point now, if he wants to read a book, sure, he has the freedom to pick whatever book he wants. And we're going to read it, but we're also going to talk about the character development. We're going to talk about cause and effect. We're going to talk about uh, the genre. We're going to talk about so many other skills and strat strategies. So the next part is resources are available. I'm going to provide those resources. And I try to do it, Kendra, in a way that is natural and organic. Sometimes with, with strewing, I will just leave things out. So I may happen to leave out, uh, he, he loves planets so much and the, and the solar system. So yes, I actually went to Michael's Arts and Crafts store online and I saw that there was a kit on the solar system. And so I bought it and uh, just could just leave it out. Sammy sees it. He, he's able to read the pictures, right? And see what it's about. And he wants to get involved, get messy and start creating astronauts and planets and whatnot and just have fun with the sand and the gravel, right? So also I, he has a uh, splashology water kit. He also has a science kit. So he is creating scientific experiments, experiments about planets and whatnot. Uh, he's got a science lab coat. We put that on. He'll go outside uh, with binoculars, telescope, look up into the sky. I mean, when it comes to, to TV, for example, with the Great Connection, I believe, believe it's the Great Connection when Jupiter and I believe it was Saturn actually got very close together. I hope it's Jupiter and Saturn, right? Uh, we were outside as a family looking up into the sky. Like, do we see it, right? Well, he would not have known about that on his own. You know, it's not like he just wakes up and oh, I'm going to watch the news, even though he likes watching the news. It was like, hey, Sammy, you know, you love planets so much. Do you know what's going to happen with two planets? Are you interested in this? Like, I am the resource. I am providing some resources for him, again, based on his interest in unschooling. I called the librarian at a local library, and I said to them, look, my son is fascinated with planets, the galaxy system. What can you let us borrow. They, they put me on hold, came back like a few minutes later and said, we've got all these books, come by, it's COVID, just pick up the books, we'll bring them out to you and whatnot. And we've been reading those books. We watch different movies, uh, cooking, baking, we love to bake and cook, right? So we'll be in the kitchen uh, making uh, pancakes, for example. Well, he loves planets. So he happens to have, got from a birthday gift actually, uh, different shapes of uh, planets and astronauts and whatnot, all theme related. And so he's now going to make pancakes in those shapes, arts and crafts, um, social studies, all those different subject areas are being integrated based on his interest. But in unschooling, 
I am that resource. Resources are available. He's five years old. I'm connecting him to resources based on his unschooling interests, self-directed interests. I'm giving him time and space. I'm not saying, you know what? You've been at that for an hour and a half. Time is up. No, not at all. Whenever, when he's finished, he's finished. My sister sent him puzzles from Puzzle Huddle, a great African-American company. And uh, it was of, of, of an astronaut out in space, right? So that's a resource that's available based on his unschooling interest. And it says knowledgeable and supportive facilitators. That's what I am. And I'm available to help if needed. I try to sit back and observe. I try to be a facilitator, a follower, a partner, and to help him. So what I will not be, what I will not be, and again, respecting all unschoolers out there, I will not be the unschooler who just lets, oh, just, 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 just have at it. And I sit back, you know, I don't know what he's doing. He's unschooling. Like, <laughs> who knows? He's been out at it for five hours. No, I'm not because I know that I'm raising with my husband, a child that we want him to be fulfilled, happy, successful, uh, to, to do really well in life. We, we want that for him. And so with that comes being literate in reading and writing, being happy about math, not anxious, you know, with test taking and all that, not saying, you know, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm afraid to do this or that, not judging himself, not having, um, being, being insecure. You know, we want him to, to be ready to take on anything and everything in the world. And so with that, he will be writing stories and whatnot and working on his writing and, and his storytelling and reading lots of books and growing in his reading skills. I mean, all that will happen naturally, but it will happen. And I will be that resource to gently help him along the way. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm not crying. My eyes are <laughs> strained from the I thought you were screen. crying because what I was saying was so <laughs> What you were saying, I listen, I think you are an awesome homeschooling parent, homeschooling uh, mom. One year in, thank you. I, I yes, I, one wow. year in. One year in, and I think that it sounds awesome. Thank um, you. and I hope that it encourages other new homeschoolers that you can do it. Yes. That you have options. Yes. Um, and that you don't have to, you know, you don't have to control everything all the time mm -hmm. and your child will learn and thrive. But also, mm -hmm. I'm so glad that you, that I was able to ask you that question because I always like to bring clarity. Um, and sometimes even as homeschoolers, you know, mm -hmm. if like I'm an eclectic homeschooler mm -hmm. um, and I've learned more about unschooling, right? But even, even with myself, like, because I don't necessarily do it, that my focus isn't, so I need the clarity. And so I'm glad that I was able to chat with you today. Thank, thank you. you so much, Leslie. Oh, Guys, you. <laughs> if you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did, please check Leslie out on Instagram and definitely check her out on Clubhouse. She has an awesome Clubhouse room. It's called Homeschooling Adventures, correct? That's correct. Okay. And so thank you so much, Leslie. Oh, thank you, Kendra. Take care.